Good day. When was the last time you calibrated your battery voltage and current sensors in Betaflight? Did you know by doing so, you could actually gain some flight time and maybe save a few bucks too? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do both in just a few short minutes so you can have accurate battery voltage and current capacity used displayed in your OSD, which will allow you to fly longer, yet at the same time, preserve the lifespan of your batteries. As a bonus, I'll show you how to set up audio warnings in your transmitter for both the battery voltage and current capacity used if you'd like, so you don't even have to watch your OSD while in flight. Sound good? Then give it a thumbs up below, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. First we're going to calibrate our voltage. These are the tools we're going to need. Of course, since we're talking about beta flight voltage and current sensor calibration, we're going to need beta flight. But we're also going to need our quadcopter, a lipo battery, and either a multimeter or a voltage checker alarm, both of which are available through links below, as well as my recommended lipos for micro quads. Now, if you're going to use a multimeter, the way you'd use this is with the battery connected to your quadcopter, you would want to touch the multimeter leads to the negative and positive pads of your ESC to check what the voltage is of the battery while it's connected to the quad. For our case, we're just going to touch the uh, negative and positive leads to the XT30. And in doing so, our multimeter is going to read 16.36 volts. So keep that in mind because now what we're going to do is we're going to use this voltage checker alarm and we're going to insert the pins of this into the balance lead. Remember multimeter said 16.36 and this is going to show 16.4 so it rounds up to the nearest tenth of a volt so this is accurate as well. Now on this you can also push this little button to set what voltage you want per cell for it to go off at. So in this case I've set it to 3.3. So when the cell voltage drops below 3.3 volts or at 3.3 volts these beepers are going to go off. You can use this as a voltage alarm when attached to your mini quad simply by connecting it to the balance lead of your LiPo as I've got here while this XT30 or XT60 connector is attached as the power source for your quadcopter. It's just another voltage checker alarm that you can mount on your quadcopter which will beep and give you a heads up when to land. As I mentioned the uh, voltage checker alarm and the multimeter as well as my recommended lipos for micro quads will be down in the links in the video description below. Now of course to calibrate our voltage we're going to need to connect our quadcopter to Betaflight but before we do I wanted to point out two things. One my props are off. Anytime you power up your quadcopter inside, indoors, you want to make sure your props are off, whether it's via battery or through connection to Betaflight. Second thing I wanted to show you is normally what I do when I power up my quad in order to keep from overheating the components, specifically the VTX, is I've got this clip-on fan, which I just clip on to the edge of the desk and turn on to get some cool air blowing at the quadcopter components and that way when I turn it on to connect to Betaflight you can see the lights flashing it's on now the components will have less of a chance to overheat with the fan blowing on it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our power and battery tab of Betaflight we're going to connect the battery to the quadcopter And now here you can see that Betaflight's showing the battery voltage as 14.04 volts. And here's our scale. This is the value we're going to change. I'm going to connect this little voltage checker alarm to the balance lead of the battery like we did previously. It's a lot simpler and a lot cheaper than a multimeter. And here you can see it says 16.3 volts. But over here our voltage is reading 14.03.
So Beta Flight at this time thinks it's time to land our quadcopter at 14 volts, basically, when we're actually showing 16.2 volts on our LiPo. So what we need to do is we need to change the scale, and we're going to do it at increments of five at a time. So I'm going to change this to 100, then click Save, and watch this number up here. 14.76. Not enough. Let's go up to 110. Save. 16.23. And what are we showing? We are showing here 16.2. So right there is probably pretty good. Let's go down 109 and see what happens. 16.1. That's probably as close as we're going to get. So we've changed our scale from 95 to 109. And we've hit saved. And now our voltage meter in beta flight is calibrated to our battery, which will allow us to accurately fly the maximum amount of time while at the same time preserving the useful battery life so that we don't have to spend additional money needlessly buying more batteries. Next we'll calibrate our Betaflight current sensor. Now we're going to calibrate our Betaflight virtual current sensor which uses the throttle position to calculate an estimated current value. To do so we're going to go to this github.com Betaflight site using this URL. I'm going to scroll down to tuning using battery charger measurement and we're going to use this process to include this equation which I'll demonstrate here shortly. Before we do this we need to go to our Betaflight OSD and make sure that we've got our battery current milliamp hours drawn which is the total battery capacity used toggled on for our OSD profile that we're going to be using. Normally I place the milliamp hours used as well as the battery voltage in the lower right hand corner of my OSD screen. For the purposes of this video I'm going to put them right in the middle of my screen just so it's completely obvious to everyone what we're looking at. So this is the battery voltage which we just calibrated and this is the value Betaflight believes is the milliamp hours used of our battery which we will use in that equation we just saw. So once we've toggled these on we're going to click save. Now we just need to go fly and at the end of our flight regardless of how long we fly we're going to take note of this value milliamp hours used at the end of our flight and write it down so that we don't forget it. All right before our flight we also need to make sure that we toggle on under post-flight statistics the battery milliamp hour used which is what we we'll use to calibrate our virtual current meter and while we're here I'll also toggle on battery voltage end. We need to click save. Now I'll go fly pack and show you what current capacity we used according to Betaflight by looking at our post-flight statistics prior to us doing our calibration. That number is one of the three values we'll use to do our calibration. All right, let's do it. All right, here we're starting off with a fully charged battery and you can already see the current sensor is way off. And then towards the end of our flight, you see we're using over 6400 milliamp hours and we stop with a reading of 6685. So we'll use that as our second of three numbers in our calculations. And now what we want to do is charge this 4S 750 milliamp LiPo battery which we just used in our flight using our balance charger. 4S, I've got it set at 700 milliamp hours just because the next jump up is 800 and I want to use no more than 1C capacity charging. So we'll connect this to the balance board. We'll start charging. And we want to watch this number at the bottom when it's fully charged. And that will show us how many milliamp hours were put back in to the LiPo. So when this is fully charged, it should read 16.8 volts. It'll stop at that automatically with this charger. And as you can see, the milliamp values are going up. So we'll take a look at that when this is fully charged. And that'll be our third of three numbers that we need for our calculation. All right, our LiPo is fully charged at 16.8 volts. And these are the milliamp hours that we put back into it, 614. And this is the third of the three numbers that we need for our calculation. So it's time to crunch our numbers and calibrate our virtual current meter. Going back to our power and battery tab, we see that our original scale was at 176, and that's the first number we needed for our calculation. So when crunching the numbers, 
we're using this equation. Now remember earlier on in the video, I mentioned that the numerator and denominator on the Betaflight site were incorrect for Betaflight because they were actually using CleanFlight. And I believe CleanFlight might have been different than what we're currently using for Betaflight. So this is the correct equation to use. We plug the three numbers in our original scale, our milliamp hours used per our OSD display and our post-flight statistics, and then also the milliamp hours put back into the LiPo via our charger. Plugging those numbers into this equation, we got our new scale number is 176 times this value, 6685 divided by 614, and our new scale comes out to be 1916, whereas our old scale was 176. So we take this 1916 and we input that into our Betaflight power and battery tab as our scale number. Let's go ahead and do that. Now with our quadcopter connected to Betaflight, we go back to our power and battery tab and insert our new scale. Our old scale was 176, our new scale is 1916. We just type in 1916, hit save, and we should be good to go. Now, if you wanted to get really accurate, you could repeat this process with another battery to check the accuracy of it and to refine the value as needed. The more often you do this process, the more accurate your values are gonna be. But remember, you'll want to calibrate both your voltage and your current meters in beta flight before your first flight of your brand new bind and fly quad or before your first flight of the new quad that you just built yourself. Now you've got your battery voltage and milliamp hours used calibrated with accurate values displayed in your OSD. But I promised you at the beginning a bonus showing you how to set up audio warnings in your transmitter for both battery voltage and current capacity used if you'd like, so you don't even have to watch your OSD while in flight. To implement this, you need to go to these two screens, logical switches and special functions, on your transmitter model setup menu. You'll need to get the telemetry values for your specific receiver that indicate battery voltage and current capacity used. In my case with Crossfire, it's RXBT and Kappa or CAPA. You need to create two logical switch lines as I've done here with L3 and L4. I'm using 14 volts as my warning value for low battery voltage, which for my 4S LiPos is 3.5 volts per cell. This current capacity warning value will need to vary based on the capacity of the battery you use. For example, when I use that 750 milliamp battery, a good warning value might be 600 or 80% of the 750. I've also got a 1.5 second delay set up, which means the actual value for my low voltage warning needs to be below this threshold warning value for at least 1.5 seconds before it triggers this low voltage warning switch. Then you need to make two special functions, one for each logical switch, voltage and current capacity used as indicated here. I've chosen to play a soundtrack should my voltage get too low or my current capacity used get too high. Hey, no. T -Mac, me home. The soundtrack I've chosen to play is a custom one I made using the process I described in this video, Jumper T16 Custom Sounds. I'll provide a link to that video also in the video description below. So now you have accurate voltage and virtual current sensor readings in your OSD and also audible warnings in your transmitter. With that information, you can now rest assured you have maximum flight time while also preserving your battery's life which will save you money in the long run. If you found this video useful, make sure to share it with your friends and head on over to the tbacfpv.com site where you can find more free resources, the Diamondback Rattler in the Pilot's Den page, and the Fast Track FPV course, Your Clear Flight Path to FPV Fun. Thanks for your time. I'll see you next video. Clear skies, friend.